Horsby's. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm not going to go over my observations from last time, um, but I do have a few more, and and they'll be brief. Um, but I will remind folks that I'm I'm well. This is actually different. So I'm uncomfortable with the timing of this item. The time to discuss raises would have been prior to closing of filing for city offices or after the election. Just my humble opinion. When we consider raises for, and so there will be a quiz, there's a question after this, Ms. Rojas, Mr. Berman, Mr. Berman, be ready for this one. When we consider raises for represented and non-represented employees, we go through a process. And so I'm going to ask one of you to explain, particularly as it relates to the 80th percentile. Who wants to take it? I, I should have told you I was going to ask that. this question before. I'm sorry for the late night quiz. No problem. I can take a shot at that. So we mm -hmm. have a list of comparator agencies uh, where we look at the agency size, uh, the services that are provided, um, and we look at the total compensation, mm -hmm. and we see where our total compensation lines up um, to make sure that is at the 80th percentile of that market. Okay. So essentially what we're, what we tell represented and non-represented is that this is what we believe the marketplace looks like comparative to our size, the sizes. This is the list and we, we want to get a target of the 80th percentile so that we're, you know, and, and to put it mildly, we're not going to be paying the best. We're not going to be pay, paying anywhere than near the worst, but we're going to pay a place where you're where you're safe, or, or excuse me, where where we feel that you are well compensated for what you do. That's that's the process we do for them, right? In a high level, okay. Um, I, I guess I'm concerned that given um, given the, the the situation, we aren't following the same process for ourselves as we do for employees, and I have a concern that when we have labor contract negotiations. I'm concerned that we're going to be faced with the rules for thee and not for me. So, yeah, we can take the 300% raise by law, but my question is, is it the right thing to do? Second thing, I recognize that $2012 do not equate to $2024, right? In the, in, I, I got this from um, Department of, uh, um, I forget which one. It's about the inflation. The dollar, have, the dollar has had an inflation rate of 2.46% per year between 2012 and 2022, producing a cumulative price increase of 27.47%. So if you want to have the same dollar as you had then, you would have to increase that dollar by 27.47%, right? Okay. The next observation I have is that uh, our question I have is, has the scope of city council work changed since 2012? Th yes, there has been an increase in population since 2012. Uh, but overall, I'd say the scope of our work hasn't changed. We still aren't a full-service city. No parks, rec, fire, sewer, water, etc. And we even transferred operations of public transit to RT. Okay, so those are, those are my, my observations. So with that, I am comfortable with voting no. I'm prepared to do so. I mentioned that last time. Um, I'm also comfortable with a 27.47% increase to get the same $800 in today's dollars, right? And then uh, my last one is that I'm open to a three-person citizen committee to evaluate our positions and provide a recommendation for increase. But I would ask that at least one of the particip participants be a resident that is um, typically critical or at least skeptical of the city council. Uh, lastly, good people can disagree. There is no ill intent in my observations. I'm not throwing shade, no sideswipes, no bad feelings. But as we're discussing a self-serving topic, I believe that for me, I have to express all of these concerns with full transparency. I know that you're all committed to that as well as I am. I just have to be very clear with my truth as I see it. So that's where I am with it.